A 400 volt three phase voltage source, this one, is feeding a three phase load, this one, through three line wires, those three over there. The source is supplying 55.6 kilowatts at a power factor 0.66 inductive. Of course, this is three phase power. We know what is the power here and the source. Total three phase power at the source 55.6 kilowatt at a power factor 0 0.669 inductive or lagging, which is the same thing. The load is absorbing 53 kilowatts at a power factor of 0 0.707 inductive. Well, that is, of course, the total three phase power absorbed by the load is 53 kilowatts at a power factor of 0 0.707 inductive or lagging, which is the same story. The first question is, what is the voltage and the load? We know that the voltage here, the line to line voltage is 480. What is this voltage here? What is the voltage and the load? But let's see, we know the total three phase power, three phase power at the factory, which would be root three times V line, and this one, times I line, and this guy in here, times the power factor, which is 0 0.707. And that has to be this value here. You say, oh, I know everything. This is what I want to know. But I don't know the current in the line. Bummer. Let's see how I can compute the current in that line. Let me turn our attention to the source. Well, in here, the total three-phase power at the source is root three times V line, which is this one, which is 400 and 80 volts is given and it's known. 480, that multiplies the current in the line, this one, which is unknown, and multiplies the power factor and the source, which is 0 0.669. So from this equation, because this is just this total three-phase power, we can obtain the current in the line, like so. 100 amps, that is the current in the line. With that current in here, we obtain that the voltage VL at the factory, this one, is 433 volts. The line-to-line -line voltage at the source, 433 volts. That takes care of part A of the exam. Now let's work on part C. Observe I'm jumping from part A to part C because it's simpler than part B. If the load is a triangle of impedances and each one of those three impedances is a resistor in parallel with a re an inductive reactor, what is the value of such resistor and such inductive reactor in ohms? Before proceeding, let me erase all of this. Let me begin by assuming that this load actually is connected in a Y like so, with three equally sized impedances connected like this. The voltage here we determined was 433 volts. That means that this voltage here is 433 divided by root 3. And the current here is 100 amps. We obtained that before. So we can compute the value of this impedance. That impedance, its magnitude is 2.5 ohms. If those 2.5 ohms can be represented as a resistor in series with an inductor, mm -hmm, those 2.5 ohms would have the same angle that is dictated by the power factor, which is R cosine of 0 0.707, which is 45 degrees. So we know now what should be the value of R in series and Jx in series. Each one of them has the same value according to the angle and it's 2.5 cosine of 45 and 2.5 sine of 45 degrees. 1768 ohms and this is J1768 ohms. But what we want is to represent each one of them in a delta. Well, a delta. Yeah, so let me roll the screen a little bit down. 
And we say, if this represented as a delta, would be three impedances like this, like this, and like this. Well, those impedances have the values of these ones multiplied times three. I just multiply them times three and write them here. That is 5.303 ohms and J 5.303 ohms. And the same is true for each one of the other phases of that delta. But now we want to represent this as a parallel of the resistor and an inductor. And we've done that before. We did that in the quiz. Represent them, each one of those in the delta by this R in parallel with this JX XP. You do exactly what you did in your in your uh, assignment or homework and you get 10.61 uh, ohms here and this one has the value of 10.61 ohms as well. Now finally let's go for part B. What are the resistance R, this one, this R, and the reactance X of the cable at each one of the three lines between the source and the load? For that allow me to represent only one of the phases of this system assuming that they are Y, Y, and Y, Y. So here's one of the phases of the Y-connected source. And now we have the reactance and the resistance of the cable and one of the Y-connected loads. Excellent. Let me write in R, J, X. And this value, this source is actually 480 divided by root 3 volts. And this one, that is 433, 433 volts divided by root 3 volts. By the way, this is 277 volts, and this is 250 volts. That's what it is. And the current is also known. The current we computed, that is 100 amps. And we know the power factor here, which is 0 0.707 lagging. And we know the power factor here, which is 0.669 lagging as well. Let me move the screen a little bit further down so we have room to work with. A phase or diagram for that, the voltage at the factory, 250 volts. And then the voltage at the source, 277 volts. This is the drop, the drop at the cable, which has, of course, a resistive part and a reactive part. We know this is Ri. We know this in size is xi, right, it's magnitude, and we know that V-drop, its magnitude is i multiplied by the total impedance, which is r squared plus x squared. Good. The current is parallel to this side. The current is like so. The current is 100 amps. This angle is known. The angle is known. The angle is 45 degrees. It's the icosine of 0.707. This is 45 degrees. And this angle here is known. It's the power factor angle at the source, which is the arcosine of 0.669 inductive. So this angle is 48 degrees. That means that this little angle that we call delta is 3 degrees. 3 degrees only. So now we have a triangle in which we know this side, this angle, and this side. We solve then using cosine law. We find VDR. That voltage is 30.5 volts, approximately, this one. But that voltage is just the total impedance, and that is just 100 amps multiplied by the absolute value of the impedance, which is given by this square root. From that, the absolute value of the impedance is just 30, 47 divided by 100, which means that this angle here is 180 minus 151.5, plus 45 degrees, that gives me the angle of the impedance of the cable, which is 73.53 degrees. Moving the screen a little bit further down, we know then that R is Z times the cosine of this one, 0 0.305 cosine of this angle here, and X is 0 0.305 sine of that angle there. 86.4 milliohms for the resistance of the cable and 0.292 ohms for the reactance of the cable. 
And that is the solution to part B of this exam. Thank you very much.